empaths and bullies. So I've made mention on this channel of my experience with bullies before. And for those who are experiencing a bully at the moment or have experienced one in the past and are still traumatized and they're having difficulties um, with getting over that experience, I want to share mine and how I resolved that today. So when I was little, I had a bully in my family and they were accustomed to bullying everyone in their family and pretty much everywhere they go and everyone that they interact with and the frustrating part is being little and discerning who you are and what's okay what's not okay um within the parameters of respecting your boundaries other people's boundaries yes and most importantly with respect to you being able to function as a happy sane productive member of society what can happen is that if you give in to the belief of the narrative of a bully, what will happen is that narrative will become true and become your truth and you will reside in victimhood. And in victimhood, you will embody anger and resentment. These are the things that were reflected to me as a part of my community along my journey. And I want to share how one gets out of it or how at least I got out of it because I'm always self-reflecting to understand how do I get into the situations that I get into how do others find themselves in the situations that they find themselves in I tend to relive the events and ask questions along the way and if I'm going to relive the situation with my first bully in my life um everything that I did was incorrect there was nothing that i could ever do that was good and again i'm saying this person has a tendency to bully everyone so i didn't understand though at that age that it wasn't particularly personal to me because later on i will share uh, more about that for you to understand how connected i am to this person to why with the things that they say with the things that they said and that they did in, re in reflection to myself and those around me why it mattered so much in the first place now moving forward um if i were to place an item somewhere and this is a familial home if i were to place something somewhere it would always be incorrect and it would always be that i didn't do it properly um i was never spoken to really with the understanding that i'm a human being and that um, i have the right to exist as a human being I was spoken to as being less than i am the child and i'm to be seen and not heard and to be do to do as i'm told and it didn't matter what i did as i was told it was never good enough i got frustrated with that behavior and i approached that well if what i'm doing is not good enough for you then i'm done doing these things now i'm going to leave it up to you to be responsible for the things that are not going according to how you'd like them since you don't like how I'm doing it, the effort that I'm putting into it, it doesn't meet your standard, then it is up to you to raise your standard and now take it upon yourself to do it the right way, the way that you would like it done. Of course, this frustrated the bully even more and it didn't resolve anything. What it did resolve in myself is that my energy was expended within myself. I was utilizing the energy that I would put outside of my body to be worried about what they thought about what I was doing and aren't doing. And I used that energy to apply it in my life. Now, the thing about that, when I was a disempowered empath who was confused about my misdiagnosis and the things that were being um, gaslit to me, is that I would regard all of the things as truth and so i lived in the stagnation of the truth of the narrative that was fed to me though that was a choice that i made because i still always had a choice to say you know those things are untrue and that there's no reason for me to believe what this bully is saying or has said now that i'm moving forward in that strength i'm able to be more creative and hold the space and stop swallowing myself up Another thing growing up amongst the bully is that I was always made to know, to be known to me 
that nothing is mine. Everything is theirs. Everything belongs to them. They have done everything and they do everything. That I don't do my part. I don't bring my part. And whatever part that I contribute and I bear, that I bring is not enough. I am not enough. The things I do, the things I think, the way I feel is does not matter to them. And it does not, there's no value in it. Um, so in that respect as well, it just left me feeling very vacant and very empty because to constantly get the, um, feedback from someone who should be nurturing and uplifting and reflecting to me the aspects of my qualities that are positive, or at least demonstrating to me in a way that I can receive it, how to do it better. I didn't get that from the bully. I got all of the you're not good enough you didn't do it well enough it's not enough you're, it's just it was just never enough no instructions though on how to do it otherwise and even as i was little growing to a teenager and coming through my own research and finding natural ways to do things and different ways more traditional ways of doing things um that person rejected it so every time when i would attempt to find solutions or attempt to uh, make adjustments that were to demonstrate I want to do better, I'm attempting to be better, as well as incorporating it within the familial aspect so that it wasn't just, oh, look at me uh, with all the solutions. It's like, this is something I realized that it's not anyone's fault in particular. This is just something cyclical that we are passing down. Still, the bully wouldn't wasn't able to hear that. Another thing is that the bully was always very clear about their pain and the things that bothered them and how their guardians um, regarded them and treated them. They're very clear about how unfair that was and how unproductive it was for them. And in the same breath, when I and other members of the family express that this is what the bully has done to us and is making us feel, the bully is apathetic. They are unable to hear it and we are all liars. Um, also the bully likes to throw in my face and our faces that if they had the education that we had, if they had the, whatever it is that they feel that we have the youth that we have, um, certain opportunities, um, here that if they had those things and they would do all of these great things and they would show us how much better, um, they can be at this or that. So that is also a fallacy within itself because this bully's life is a reflection of how that is a grave delusion of grandeur because there's nothing working in this bully's life because of the choices that they made. So to wrap this up, bullies are people who are existing in their trauma. They exist in an apathetic state and they're unable to see beyond that state. They have a narrative in their mind that everything belongs to them what belongs to you belongs to them and that you are their property you belong to them and you owe them beyond your life so even in death you're still owing them and there is never going to be an end to what they feel that you owe them and you have always done something to them they have done nothing wrong they are the victim and if you're not careful when you're in proximity with the bully you can adopt their personality. You can pick up on them. And if you are an empath who mirrors actions and you are unaware, you will always mirror out their behavior. So you might have episodes that are unlike your nature. However, it is the internal chaos of the bully that you are puppeting, that you are enacting, because this is a broken individual who intends to break everything and everyone around them. It doesn't matter if they're a man or a woman because when the women get like this, they're in their masculine energy. So they're like bulls in China shops. A China shop in the sense that everything is there in an order. Everything is there in a traditional aspect, but the bull comes in angry, seeing red, and decides that they are going to tear everything down because it does not rest in alignment what they feel makes absolute sense. So in conclusion, the bully still exists in physicality and my response has just been to mind my business. I made it very clear that because of their own words, 
the their choices of still to this day running the narrative that I'm not good enough, that if it wasn't for me, they would have all of these things, they would be where they are, that these are the reasons why till this day I will not be in the same room with them for longer than five minutes, in fact. Because this energy of chaos is permeating within their being. They're living in a phallic, fallacious truth of I and everyone else around them is a problem and if it wasn't for myself and everyone else around them that they would be better off. They would have all these things when that is so untrue. They made choices in every aspect of their life and they're blaming those that came after those choices for those choices. None of that makes sense. So when you look at it from that critical thinking point, you realize bullies have nothing over you as an empath they have nothing over you because they're coming to take from you what you have what do you have you have the gift of being able to see through them you have the gift of being able to know that all is not well within them and if they would just simply address what they're attempting to stuff under the rug and they're trying to bury that is an untruth they will come to see that acknowledging their pain is how they're going to free themselves of that narrative and that pain. And that is why you trigger them. You trigger them because they're not ready to make any adjustments in their life. And if they acknowledge that you are in your truth, then they will have to make those same adjustments that you have made and is being made within the collective. They want to stagnate in victimhood. So I'm learning to laugh with a smile in the moments and to still be able to dance in the rain when the time comes and to articulate the truth with the facts and to stick to what is before us in the trauma and to not try to hide from it anymore. So if anything that I said here resounds, like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'm going to see you all in the next video. Embrace your nature. It has needs.